Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Uh, been a little, little while since we've done a video. Uh, I've had a busy couple weeks. We've had spring football start back in April, uh, April 23rd. Uh, this year we actually didn't play our game until uh, one week later than normal, so we had about five weeks of spring football, so we could only go four days a week. Had to take at least uh, one day a week off so we wouldn't run into too many practices, so we wouldn't be over our practice allotment, so we had to take at least one day off a week. And then um, I moved in the beginning of May during spring football, which is not always the smartest move in the world, but uh, kind of had to close when we had to close. So moved about 20 minutes from my house into a new house, so we were busy moving. Uh, my wife and I were busy moving and packing and unpacking and doing some things. And So it's been a busy little while, but I figured uh, now that spring's over, we just played uh, last Thursday night, wanted to get a video out there, and, and uh, decided that I wanted to um, do a video on, on tackling and and not so much um, a video on how to tackle but just to talk about tackling in general and then why I think we struggle with some things um, because we haven't tackled very well the last uh, the last two or three years and and now after our spring game I think I'm starting to figure out uh, a little bit more about why or at least what we need to do in my opinion I think to get better all right um, if you're in the market for a, a replay system, check out GameStrat, the most advanced, fastest replay system on the market. We will be using GameStrat for our equipment next year. Did not use um, did not use a sideline replay system in the spring game for a lot of different reasons, but uh, we will be using it um, in the fall. We will be using GameStrat, so check that out. Also, check out uh, Just Play Sports for some uh, digital software and some. Um, some digital playbook stuff and then some some learning environment stuff for your kids uh, for your team to get into uh, game plan stuff and installs and quizzes and different ways to build some things into uh, your digital side of things now the, the, you know we're using a computer for everything that we do now and and everything's becoming or has been for a long time but everything's been digital but now even the learning environment is going to get to a point where everything we do is going to be online kids are going to have a chance to study game plans online they're going to have a chance to look at things online and then be able to answer some quizzes and get some feedback so rather than just have the old school uh playbook out there and, and you know the old school um game plans that you would maybe hand out to kids that they'd have to read through and go through now we're actually going to get a feedback system to where kids have to take a quiz they take it online it's on the system it's on the just play website you can then check how you know uh, when they took the quiz, how many they got right, so then you can go back and figure out within the game plan, okay, well, we really don't have a good idea about this. We really need to work more on that. So it's a great piece of software that uh, I'm going to dive further into over the summer once everything calms down, and I'll be using it full-time next year. So I wanted to talk a little bit about tackling, and, and what I wanted to go through was, you know, kind of where we are with tackling now, what we're trying to do. Um, you know, not that it's anything different. We're doing the same thing probably as everybody else out there, why we're doing it, whatnot. But then I wanted to break all that down into what I think is the reason we struggle the most. And, and, uh, and I think it's right on par with the reason you see a lot of the offenses that you see nowadays, in my opinion, that I think the two things go hand in hand. So we've, uh, like most people, the last couple of years, we've become a leverage-based tackling team. All right, we've tried to keep our helmet on our leverage side. All right, so try to keep our helmet out of tackles. We try to keep it on our helmet side. All right, we've tried to... All right, work a bunch on near foot, near shoulder, all right, with our leverage. So obviously, if, if I was leveraging the camera and my left foot, left shoulder were near foot, near shoulder, I would try to keep my helmet, okay, to the right side, which is where I have leverage on the ball carrier. So I have leverage, all right, with the ball on my inside pad. I want to keep it on my inside pad, near foot, near shoulders, this left foot, left shoulder here. So my leverage side is the right. I want to keep my helmet to my leverage side, all right. When you get into, into different types of tackles, you also work a little bit on near pec, all right? So some of the upper body profile type tackles, even though it's still helmet out of the tackle, um, helmet to the leverage side, not getting your helmet across the bow anymore like you used to in the old days, um, you still have some tackles where, it, where you're focusing on a near pec, all right? The swoop technique, which is basically the old school shimmy, uh, come to balance, close the distance. Now it's that near foot, near shoulder swoop technique. Um, you know, you used to talk about breakdown in the old days, all different things. It, it's all relatively the same. Now, it, you know, the, the term swoop has been used in with, with Seahawks tackling system and, and a lot of the 
USA football stuff and near foot, near shoulder, how to get into that position, lower the pads, sink, be in that near foot, near shoulder, and that end of the closing the distance would be the swoop technique. All right, eyes to thighs, all right, within all the, all the Seahawk tackles now and all that hawk tackling system, eyes to thighs is something that you hear all the time. All right, rapid squeeze, all right, so now instead of that old, old school, old, you know, old grab high cloth, shoot your hands, elbows violent, grabbing high cloth behind, well now that we're doing a lot of things towards the thigh board, it becomes more of a wrap and squeeze than a shoot for high cloth. All right, now on some of the profile tackles, I think you still may be, may be able, when you're aiming for a near peck, you may, you may be able to, you know, shoot the hands violently and grab high cloth and obviously uh, where you get to the next part, drive for five. Drive for five has been around forever. Roll your hips, run your feet, all right? Um, you know, fit, fire, finish, all those types of deals that people talk about and all the different buzzwords that people use. Um, you know, we've been talking about taking the weight room into tackling for 30 years now with your squat and your power clean, your deadlift, and roll your hips and, and, and strike on the rise. And, you know, uh, you know one of the Defense coordinators at, for, at a clinic I listened to years ago used to talk about it like a snake or you know a, a you know a, a rattlesnake or a any snake in in general that stays coiled and ready and then when it strikes it can strike half the distance of his body but it always has to stay coiled if it is uncoiled and it doesn't have any distance that it can strike so it loses the power to strike so it's the same thing within the football we want to hit on the rise we want to stay coiled we want to have triple joint extension we lose all our power once we're up tall. So we want to get into that snake coil position, and then when we come out, we want to be able to triple joint extend and run everything and drive for five and roll the hips and run the feet. Those things are, haven't really changed. Drive for five, you know, is, is 25, 30 years ago, you used to a tackling drill, and the coach would tell you to, to run a guy past a cone or past a line. It's the same thing it was, you know, drive for five is just a little bit better buzzword that people use. All right, and then... You know, sometimes originally in the, in, in the roll tackle, hawk tackle stuff with all the new tools that came out, it would be eyes to the thighs, wrap and squeeze, and then you would roll towards yourself with the hawk roll, gator roll tackle, you know, rugby roll, whatever you want to call it. It's been called a million different things. All right, but, you know, those are all the different um, buzzwords and kind of keynotes that we've been trying to do. And then within drills, those are all the different things we've tried to incorporate. We've tried to incorporate those things into all of our drills in different tackling circuits and different tackling settings to keep our players safe, but to be able to teach the fundamentals of tackling with buzzwords that players could understand. All right? And then we actually, you know, we talk just like everybody else, kind of breaking your tackles down the way the Seahawks do it. Compression tackle is a two-on-one tackle, so you've got two players converging on the ball. They each have to own their leverage side. They each have to own their hip. And now they're going to have a near foot, uh, near shoulder deal, which for each of them should be different. If we're both converging on the ball, then each of us have an inside shoulder to the ball that's near foot, near hip. So for me, uh, near foot, near shoulder, for me, that would be my left foot, my left foot, left shoulder. But the guy on this side, it's his right foot, right shoulder. All right. So if we both attack it the same way and we close the distance and we come to balance with a swoop near foot, near shoulder, my right foot, right shoulder is going to keep my helmet to the left. My left foot, all right, left shoulder, left foot is going to keep my helmet to the right. Now in a compression tackle, two on one, you don't have two players on the same team, all right, running into each other and, and, and dealing with the major, you know, traumatic concussion blows of two players on the same team going to hit a guy in ramming helmets because we understand how to own the hip and the leverage side of the ball carrier. So that's what a compression tackle is, all right. And then your standard hawk tackle, which was eyes to the thighs, helmet stayed behind because it was near foot, near shoulder, so my helmet stayed behind the tackle and out of the tackle, eyes to the thighs, wrap and squeeze, drive for five, all right? Then they incorporated kind of the hawk lift where it was an opposite hand, so if it was a, you know, if for me, if it was a left shoulder, left foot was near foot, near shoulder, when I made that tackle, I would then lift with the right hand, so they incorporated the hawk lift technique, all right, maybe two years ago, somewhere along that time. And then the, the roll technique, which was, you know, the hawk tackle in general, rolling to yourself. So it was eyes to the thighs, wrap and squeeze, drive for five, all right, or roll to yourself. So if you got to a point where you were couldn't drive for five, all right, you were off the ground or your feet were no longer on the ground, you would then wrap and squeeze and you would roll, all right, to yourself. 
and they were all kind of drills that the guys were doing. And we still do them to this day. We still do the you know the roll drills and. And there was a lot of technology brought out with the donuts and the rings and different things. And guys have been creative with how they teach it. All right. But, you know, those are all versions of the hawk tackle with the standard hawk tackle and the hawk lift, the hawk roll. All right. And then you had the profile tackle, which was more the big on big, all right, uh, above the chest tackle. But it was still leveraged, focusing on the near peck. So you never got your neck in that position to get your helmet across. Your helmet was always kind of behind. All right, the tackle. And then what they found out, though, was at some point, you know, just like anything else, we've tried our hardest to eliminate it, but it's almost impossible. At some point, when a guy changes the last second and goes against your leverage, you end up with a cross-face tackle. Or in other words, I'm coming to near foot, near shoulder this way, and at the last second as I swoop, that guy changes direction, and he's no longer to my leverage side. Well, now I end up with my head across if I'm still using the same near foot, near shoulder, I end up with my head across the tackle. We're not purposely trying to get our head across. We're not teaching the old-fashioned way of head across, putting that neck and that head in a bad position. It just so happens that when I near foot, near shoulder, and that guy changes directions at the last minute, it ends up with all right, what the Seahawks describe as a cross-face tackle. All right, so it's a cross-face uh, profile tackle or a cross face hawk lift tackle okay it's the same technique and everything's the same but at the last minute that guy changed directions and you didn't get a chance to change directions you're already in 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 a position you're already broke down you close the distance you've already are in the swoop position he changed directions and now it ends up being your head is across or it's a cross face tackle still trying to keep the head out of it all right so We've done all those things. We've worked on all those drills. We've tried to, like everybody else, we've tried to keep all those drills in tackling circuits. We've tried to do them real close. We've tried to do them on launch pads or tackling pads. We've tried to do them with hand shields involved. We've tried to do everything we can to keep the kids safe and to keep our players um, working on tackling, but at the same time not always being 100% live. All right? After watching our spring game and after watching us struggle the last year and a half, Originally, I thought, well, you know what? We got some young players. We got to get bigger, stronger, faster in the weight room. That's why we don't tackle very well. Okay. Well, with our spring game this year, we have all the same players that played last year, and we're bigger, stronger, faster than we were. Our kids are 10, 15 pounds heavier. They're all stronger. They all run better, and we still struggle tackling the ball all spring and in the spring game. Okay. So, what I'm going to do now is, I'm to me, I'm going to give you the most important piece of, of tackling advice for us and why we struggle and probably in the game in general but this is the one thing that we are going to work on and I'm going to come up with as many drills or steal as many drills as I possibly can for us the bottom line with all the techniques involved all right and all the different types of tackles you can go through okay when I break down us playing our spring game the bottom line is the biggest thing that gets us in trouble is we cannot track the football. All right, and in a tackling scenario, I'll talk about tracking the hip. We do not track the hip of the football very well at all. I would say for us, 80 to 90 percent of the tackles we miss are because we overrun, outrun, okay, all right, or we just can't get into all the positions that we worked on in practice. We just can't get into those positions, all right, because we don't do a good job tracking the hip, all right. I learned it originally way back in the day as tempo the hip or tempo the ball, all right. So we're talking about staying behind, closing the distance, all right. We've got to figure out ways on top of all the other scenarios on top of all the leverage-based shoulder tackles, on top of near foot, near shoulder, near peck, swoop technique, eyes to the thighs, wrap and squeeze, drive for five, on top of all that, and then classifying all the different tackles in, into their classifications, we need, above and beyond everything else, we need to get into those positions. So our drills, somehow, some way, have to be incorporated to where everything we do is movement to close the distance to get into the position to then hawk tackle, hawk lift tackle, hawk roll tackle, profile tackle, all right, compression tackle, whatever it may be. 
Okay? Because the bottom line for us is we struggle to tackle because we don't track the hip or we don't tempo the hip. Okay? And the bottom line, and this is why I think the game has changed so much and why everybody likes doing things the way they do them now, is the biggest killer to, to, in, to me in all football, but especially lower level football, the biggest killer for us is that right there. We do not tackle well in space. We do not play well in space, all right? Because our guys, for whatever the reason is, we've got guys now that can run. We run fairly well. I don't think we run poorly at all on the defensive side of the ball. We've gotten guys that are a little bit bigger and stronger now. All right? The problem is in space, we don't understand how to close the distance while tracking the hip and tempoing the hip and understand near foot, near shoulder when we get there. We constantly overrun. We constantly put ourselves in a position to reach, grab, throw, okay? We very rarely in our spring uh, scrimmage and in our spring game, you very rarely saw somebody get hit, driven, taken the other way with our guy either on top or the side now, depending on the leverage of the tackle and the type of tackle. You almost never see that, all right, in, in our spring game or our spring scrimmage. It's constantly us to the side, grab, throw, hold on for dear life, and the reason for that is not a strength issue anymore, all right? It's not even a speed issue anymore because we have some guys on our defense. We actually run pretty well. The reason for that is we cannot, in space, close the distance to the ball carrier while getting into proper position to near foot, near shoulder leverage. I, don't think, I still don't think we understand leverage, okay? Um, where the ball carrier is, where you are in the field, where your help is, where the sideline is, how or where you're tracking the ball from, inside out, outside in. I don't think our guys understand leverage, how to win with leverage, all right? And then the ability to close that in a 10 to 20 yard window and then make those tackles. So, you know, if we put our guys out on, on, on dummies, our guys can all get into a near foot, near shoulder swoop and we can swoop the, the distance of a dummy and then we can make a hop tackle or a compression tackle. We can put two guys out there that come down dummies with a near foot, near shoulder, one guy right foot, one guy left foot and they swoop to make a compression tackle, all right? We can do all those things in drills, all right? The problem is we can't go 15, 20, 30 yards maybe on a kickoff and get our bodies in position to do that. So for us, the biggest deal of all that we have to figure out now is I've got to come up with ways, all right? And obviously everybody's seen, you know, the number one drill, it, it, or if you haven't seen it, you get a ball carrier that's running sideways and then he's allowed to, whenever he wants to, all right, he's allowed to kind of throttle down, accelerate, throttle down, accelerate, and then you've got, all right, the defensive player here chasing it downhill, and every time that guy throttles down, we throttle, accelerate, throttle, so that we stay behind the ball. All right, that drill's been done. That, uh, you know, for me, it's just called a tempo drill. Track the hip, tempo the hip. That drill's been done forever, okay? What I think we've got to do is we've got to find all the different ways that our kids are on the field defensively or in special teams. We've got to incorporate all those things into how we want to do hawk tackles, hawk rolls, hawk lifts, profiles, or, or even compressions. So what I'm saying is we have to find ways that we've got to get our, ki our kids to drop into a coverage and then be able to sprint close the distance to make some type of hawk tackle. All right, we've got to get two guys in coverage to be able to sprint, close the distance, and make a compression tack. We've got to get our linemen to be able to beat blocks, come off blocks, and as they come off the block, make a profile tack. Okay, because that's the other thing, coming off blocks, all right, it's one thing to be in a hole face-to-face -face with a guy and you whiff or, or you get ran over. It's another thing to get off a block and make a tackle on somebody because that's what actually happens in a game. All right, so... We've got to incorporate all the things that happen in football, all the different scenarios, and we've got to go back and look in the spring and say, okay, we've got to have a guy inside out that opens the coverage, chases a bubble, now he's got to close the distance and he's got to keep near foot, near shoulder so that guy can't cut back behind him. All right? We've got to put a guy in a, in a out-of-phase man position, inside of somebody, have a guy run a route, that we know is whether it be a shoot, arrow, whatever the route is, we know that route's going to get out in front of you a little bit, and now we've got to be able to chase it down and tackle it with leverage depending on where we're chasing it from. All right, so we've got to take, and to me it really, you know, obviously you can, you can, you can take drills and, you, you know, drops, curl flat, hook curl, 
you know, pattern matches. You can get your guys to pattern match and then run. So have them pattern match first and then come out of that and run to make a tackle. Um, you know, kick off stuff or punt stuff running down the field. Avoid the first level, button press the second level, then make a tackle. All right, you can do all those things and make them as football um, specific and game specific to drills, all right, and, and you can do all those things, and we've done a bunch of those things, obviously not a good enough job, but to me, the biggest thing, no matter how we do it, is even if we're not incorporating the most specific scenario for our guys, so for argument's sake, let's say we're not generally, you know, every time it's not our Mike linebacker dropping hook to curl, settling up, ball comes out, and now he's got a sprint. As long as we are doing things that make our kids sprint in space to close the distance, to understand how to track the hip of a ball carrier, everything needs to be in space, everything needs to be closing a distance, everything needs to be sprint, track, swoop, then be able to make a tackle. So we've got to take all the components of the things we're already doing and we've got to find a way to build them into drills where every time we do tackling, it should either be in spaces where we got to close the distance. Now, here's why I think people struggle with this. Every time you're doing tackling drills or you're doing tackling circuits, you're always trying to narrow. For the last 50, 60, 70 years of football, every drill we've done has always tried to get closer to each other in general. To where some drills can't even be done. The old-fashioned nutcracker where you lay on your back, helmet to helmet, and get up. You can't even do those anymore without space. You know, we've constantly tried to, all right, get to a point where everything is safer. So we've either brought the drills closer together so that the contact isn't as far apart from each other, or the drills that were close together that involve guys getting up off the ground, we move them slightly apart so now that one guy, when he got off the ground, didn't have his head still down. And, and, and you know, analyzing all the different drills and the ways the kids were getting hurt, we've done a great job doing all that. And in a lot of those drills, we've we found ways to make everything closer so we don't have these big violent impacts and collisions all the time. Well, the problem is the game of football now is being played in space. Teams are wide open. Everything is being done, you know, basketball on grass. So now we've got to be able to sprint the distance to close the distance to be able to get into a position to use all the techniques to stay safe, all right, and to use all the techniques to keep our helmet out of the tackles but get guys on the ground. We've got to be able to run and close the distance and swoop or shimmy, old school, break down, come to balance. We've got to be able to do all those things. So almost everything we do, even though we don't want the hitting to be in these broad range 15 yards, we don't want guys 15 yards apart running at each other and, and having train wrecks, no. What we want is we want some type of angle tackle where the defender has to run 15 yards all right. Maybe the offensive player isn't going to be running 15 yards, but the defender's got to run 15 yards so that he can get to a point where he's got to come to bounce. Even if we're going to do it on a, on a half moon where we tell the kid, you know, the distance we would like you to swoop or shimmy or come to bounce is about the distance of that hand shield or that half moon. So I want you to sprint 20 yards from point A to point B, and when you get to point B, I need you to now near foot, near shoulder swoop on the half moon into a hawk tackle. All right, so, you know, however we can do that, it's got to be where our kids have to run to close distance in space on top of all the types of tackles, buzzwords of tackling that we need because the bottom line for us is tracking or tempo space. I'm convinced after watching our spring game, that is the one thing that kills it. It's not like it's me and another guy in the hole and I get trucked and ran over every time. That's not how we're missing most of our tackles. All right? We are missing tackles when we get to where we need to and it's me and another guy in an open area, we can't get the guy on the ground. All right? Or if we do get him on the ground, it's just the ugliest thing you've ever seen. But because we have kids that can run, other people show up and we end up eventually getting a guy on the ground. But in open space, we very rarely get to these types of tackles with this type of technique. All right, because by the time we get there, we are so out of position, we lose our leverage, we don't swoop, shimmy, come to bounce, we don't near foot, near shoulder, and then the ball ends up constantly going under us, behind us, we overrun it, it cuts back, okay, simply because we don't understand how to play in space. All right, so after doing some tackling research and going back and looking, I think we're teaching a lot of the things 
that we need to be teaching. I think we're talking about a lot of good things. I think that we're talking about different types of tackles. All right. I think we need to talk about it more with our kids. But I think our coaches understand that we need to keep the helmet out. I think we're trying to keep our helmet, all right, or you know, our helmet on our leverage side so that near foot, near shoulder, our helmet stays out of the tackle. I think we're doing a good job trying to teach all those things. I think we're doing a bad job replicating where they come up in game scenarios. So I don't think we're doing a real good job covering game scenarios because when our kids get in game scenarios and the field is, you know, 53 and, and a third and 100 yards long, actually 120 yards long or however you want to look at it, we, the game is so wide open now that when we get out there, our kids can't translate that into settings to where they can close the distance in space, run around, and then get in good position to make plays. All right? And on top of that, I think you've got to add in the factor that on game nights, kids have a tendency to revert back to, you know, things that they've done in the past, revert back to old habits, and then they have a tendency with people and cameras rolling and, you know, nowadays with social media and highlights and everything else, everything wants to be a highlight and kids just lose the ability to make tackles and make plays because they're always trying to make highlights. All right, so we lose the ability. I'm going to make this big hit, and I overrun it, and the guy cuts back and makes me whiff because I didn't tempo track leverage the ball near foot, near shoulder because I'm trying to make a huddle highlighter because some company's on the sideline sending out highlights on Twitter, and i got to get my highlight on Twitter. So, you know, it's become self-indulgent to where kids want to make big hits instead of tackles. And, you know, on game nights, getting a kid to function on a game night takes so much work in practice and so much work developing good habits to get the kid to just perform with those habits on a Friday night. It takes years of, of hard work and, and obviously we've got to continue to work and continue to find ways to put our kids in good position because we still do not tackle very well. So I hope this video helps you guys. If there's uh, in the comment section anything you want to leave that will help what you do, how you do it. All right, I'm always interested in listening to everybody. I tell everybody all the time just because I don't use an idea doesn't mean I don't listen. I'll listen to what you have to say, and if it helps me, then I, I'm more than willing to, all right, to use the idea. But if there's things you do in a tackling drill or a tackling circuit or a way that you have taught your kids to swoop or come to balance or anything out there, obviously I'll take the help wherever I can get it because we do not tackle very well. All right, so remember, guys, you don't play well until you play fast. I'll see you hopefully sometime real soon with another video in the near future. See you.